Welcome to the Good Mood Show. I'm your host, Matt O'Neill. Be sure to hit subscribe so that you get a good mood every single week. Today, we are talking about an alternate version of the chapter Conquering Anger that I wrote, and it is specifically about anger that is below our conscious awareness. And this kind of subconscious anger creates all kinds of issues. It shows up as physical pain or chronic pain in our body. Uh, it can cause disease, it can cause headaches, it can cause nausea, back pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, neck pain. And when you start to get really in tune with pain in your body and then noticing that it's got an emotional component behind it always, um, I shouldn't say always, just about you know 95% of the time there's an emotional component to pain, uh, that is when you start to open up to how to really um, manage your emotions in a much better way. And this is the good mood show. So we're always talking about feeling good. And the more in tune you get with your emotions, uh, the better you can feel. So if you want a copy of this alternate chapter, chapter seven, alternate version of the book, Conquering Bad Moods, uh, that should be released January 2024, uh, you won't get this chapter any anywhere else other than uh, reaching out to us on our contact page at goodmoodshow.com, or if you're a member of our newsletter, we'll email it out to you for free this week. Um, you can also download it instantly this week if you just sign up for the newsletter, and uh, and you'll just get an instant download of this chapter. But you know, let's talk about this. Um, the reason that this subconscious anger can cause so many problems. Our society kind of raised us into thinking that being angry was a bad thing. You know, when you're really angry, it's obvious you're in a bad mood. You got fists are clenched, your face turns red, you start yelling at people. Uh, it's obvious that you're not having a good time, and neither are the people you're yelling at, for that matter. Um, you know, think of like a little child throwing a temper tantrum, kicking their feet and stomping their feet and, and trying to hit their parents. Uh, when we're little and things didn't go our way, we just kind of innocently did these things and we lashed out to those who are closest to us. Uh, as adults, we only express anger in this way when we feel we are so justified that we're willing to use our force to get our point across. Most of us don't really express anger in this way often. And uh, we kind of learned how to hide down this, this anger and pretend that we don't even have it. You know, our parents, our teachers, other adults, they punished us when we were kids, when we acted out with extreme anger. Uh, so we just started to learn how to suppress our anger into our energy systems and pretend that we weren't angry when, in fact, we were furious. You know, we've got so good at hiding our anger from others that we even hide it from ourselves. Most people that you talk with will, will say, you know, I'm not an angry person. That's me. I always said I'm not an angry person. And yet the vast majority of adults have an anger issue due to unexpressed and suppressed angry impulses that are hidden away in less than a fraction of a second by our subconscious mind. So, you know, this, this goes back to Sigmund Freud's theory of the, per, of the personality. And he's got this theory that our human personality has a primitive aspect to it called the id. The id is the aspect of our personality that is present with when we're an infant, and it seeks to fulfill its needs by getting irritated when it doesn't get what it wants. You know, imagine trying to tell a hungry two-year-old just to wait and eat later. Not going to go well. I've got a two-year-old. When he wants a snack, he wants a snack now. And if I don't give him a snack, he is crying, bawling, throwing himself on the floor, completely losing it until we get him a snack. Well, that's the id in action. The thing is that id never goes away. So you just grow up as an adult and that id still gets really furious when you don't get what you want. So this piece gets raging mad when your expectations are not met. So your expectations are the key. All anger comes from having expectations that are unmet. So around about age five, we develop a second aspect of our personality called the superego. The superego acts like the parent in your own mind. It tells you to be good. It tells you how you should act as a model citizen in society. 
Uh, when the id wants to throw a tantrum for not getting what it wants, the superego as an adult will step in and silence the id and tell it that it can delay its, its uh, gratification and get things done in the world because, yes, I know you're hungry and you want a snack, but we've got some work to do right now. So think of the id like a little kid that still lives in you and it still gets irrationally mad when something happens that you don't like. Uh, another way to picture this id is like the devil on one shoulder that tells you to seek instant pleasure and instant gratification. It wants you to go punch your boss right in the face when he says something you think is disrespectful. Uh, the superego is like the little angel on the other shoulder. It tells you to be nice and polite and never do anything wrong. Both the id and the superego operate unconsciously and behind the scenes well, you are this conscious ego in the middle that's kind of moderating between the two. So the id personality um, gets really, really mad when it doesn't get what it wants or when it thinks that it's being attacked or uh, that somebody is doing something that's not, that's not right. It's this instinctual primal aspect of your reptilian oldest version of your brain. You cannot evolve above it. It is just there. It doesn't care about logic. It doesn't care about etiquette. It doesn't care about what's socially acceptable or not. It seeks pleasure and it wants its desires satisfied immediately, regardless of the consequences. When the id is denied the pleasure it seeks, you experience anger on a subconscious level. You'll notice this come out when you're really exhausted at the end of a long day. When your energy is super low, you don't have the power, your superego doesn't have the power to override this id's childish tantrums. That's when you're more likely to snap at someone because you just don't have the energy to keep that personality, that part of your personality at bay. Uh, you might yell at your kids when you're super tired or hungry. Uh, you might yell at your significant other. Um, you know, you might get really irritated at the waiter if they're taking a long time to bring your food, or you might feel really frustrated about an email you got from somebody at work and start to lose your cool about small stuff when you're really exhausted. And that's because the id doesn't, you don't have the energy to suppress this uh, aspect of your personality. So um, as we reach this age of responsibility, like between the ages of like 25 and 45, really maybe 30 to 50, the pressure of the world and the demands on our time, they create a lot of rage from this little kid, the id inside of us. During this time of our lives, that, that little kid aspect of our personality feels like it never gets to have fun anymore. And it bottles up a lot of this anger inside as we continue to ignore its desires because we have to go to work. We got to pay the bills. We need to be a good spouse. We got to be a good parent. We got to be all responsible. So the whole while that we're denying this id what it wants, which is instant gratification of what it wants, uh, the id would rather have a party at the beach than be responsible. So it gets super angry at you being so freaking responsible all the time. This anger appears childish to us. And so that's why we don't really pay any attention to it. We pretend that it doesn't exist. But we're just we we're just suppressing this angry energy that is natural and there's nothing wrong with it. But what happens when all this anger builds up? Eventually, our bodies try to alert us. They try to tell us, they try to signal us that we've got an anger problem from bottled up suppressed anger. And when the way that our body alerts us that something is wrong is with physical pain. Pain in our bodies is a sign of suppressed anger. In my mid thirties, I had a lot of back pain, it, you know, and it started kind of like at the start of this age of responsibility. I started seeing a chiropractor in my late twenties. And like most people, I didn't know that there wasn't really something wrong with my back. I thought, Hey, I've got back pain. I must have injured myself playing basketball. I play a lot of basketball. Uh, maybe it's from an old car accident. You know, I certainly didn't think it was because I was suppressing the emotion of anger. I didn't consider myself an angry person. In fact, just the opposite. It was really rare for me to shout at someone or to express anger at someone. But I had this terrible back pain and it would show up sometimes just out of nowhere. And so I'd, you know, I'd, I'd go get a regular massage. 
I was seeing the chiropractor on a regular basis, but you know, and, and that would work for a little bit. And then my back pain would come back. So then I had a regular massage that would help for a little bit. Uh, my buddy said, Hey, go try acupuncture. So I tried acupuncture. Um, you know, the adjustments would give me some relief, but the back pain would just keep coming back. So uh, I bought these heating pads and I would have heat. Uh, so that might work. And then I had these ice packs. And then when it got really bad, I would eat Advil and take a leave. And I, I had a special pillow for my car to help with the back pain, like a low back pillow. I had a special chair with a special back pillow in my office, at my house, and at work. In fact, my entire life was adjusted to accommodate this terrible back pain. And like most people with chronic pain, I just assumed there was something medically or physically wrong with my body. What I didn't know is that it was really just this unprocessed anger from the id that was just pissed off that I was so responsible that, you know, I, I was married and now I had to, you know, do what my wife wanted me to do instead of just what I wanted to do. And that we were having children and I had to take care of these little babies. And then I had this big job and all these people that relied on me. And, you know, when I was in my early twenties, I didn't have any responsibilities really, you know, I just had to go to work and make enough money to, to keep myself alive. And it, before that, I was a, a kid, you know, I was in my teens and you don't have much responsibility as a kid either. So it's like when we get past this boyhood and we become a man, we start to tell the id we're, that it can't have fun all the time and it gets kind of mad. And that's where the pain comes from. So um, if you experience pain that, that goes off and on, you know, maybe sometimes you get headaches or migraines. Maybe sometimes you get shoulder aches and, you know, maybe sometimes you get knee pain or like me, you get back pain or neck pain. It's not natural. Pain is not natural. When we feel physical pain, it is meant to be acute and to alert us that something is causing us harm. If you had a rock in your shoe, there'd be pain in your foot to let you know to remove that rock so that you could walk pain free. In a similar way, if you have pain that keeps coming back, this is your soul trying to get your attention that you have unprocessed emotions that you need to remove so that you can become pain-free. This pain could manifest in many different forms, as I just said. Uh, for me, I experienced all of them. Uh, like Sometimes you, like my wife would come see me in the morning. I'd have an ice pack on my back with the back pillow behind it, I'd have an ice pack on my knee and I'd have an ice pack on my shoulder and she would laugh at me. But I was like, oh man, all these basketball injuries, you know? But really all this stuff was going on because of emotions that I wasn't dealing with. The majority of our society today is living with some type of pain that comes on and off. Uh, whether it's back pain or joint pain or headaches or stomach aches or any type of physical pain that comes and goes, you know, just about everyone believes that this pain is due to some external physical problem and definitely not from their emotions. And that's the problem. We all try to treat this pain with physical adjustments or medication, but the root cause of this pain is most likely in just about all cases, unprocessed emotions. It's not the back pain. It's not the shoulder pain. It's not the knee pain. It's not the neck pain. The pain is real. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to discount that my back pain was real. Like I, when it got, when it got its worst, I couldn't even get in and out of the car. It was so bad. I remember I was like, I just need to get to a surgeon and have him cut me open and fix me because I cannot deal with how bad this hurts. And I, like, I needed a walker or crutches to get into the office for the surgeon to see me. So, uh, and you know, it's, it's real. Like I've got shoulder pain right now on my left shoulder. It is real shoulder pain. It's not, it's not fake. I also know that the root of this shoulder pain has an emotional component to it. So while I may have injured my shoulder playing basketball, or I might've slept on it wrong, um, there's really not any accidents. So if you Google left shoulder pain, emotional reasons for left shoulder pain, which I have done, of course, uh, it'll show you that your left shoulder is closest to your heart. And so most likely um, there's a sadness or a heartache 
that is uh, that your left shoulder pain is trying to alert you to. And this, ironically, my left shoulder pain showed up right about the same time that my stepdad passed. And you know, unprocessed grief that I just haven't been able to fully feel or let myself experience, um, you know, is is now trying to catch my attention with this shoulder pain. And and it's going to be the same way with you. This is a really good thing for you. If you have pain that keeps showing up in a certain area, just go to Google and do a search. The search is either emotional reason for pain in my knee, specifically my right knee is something you could type, or emotional reason for pain in my low back, or emotional reason for migraines. Whatever it is, you just type in emotional reason for this pain. And there are people that have written articles about every type of pain and how where that emotional problem usually uh, shows up. You know, and don't worry, you're not alone because all of us, all of us experience pain because of uh, unprocessed emotions. This is this is like a part of being human. Nobody does this right. Um, if it was easy to be human, you know, we'd all be pain free. But if I think the U.S., uh, what we spend on back pain is like billions of dollars a year, like bigger than the GDP for most countries is what we spend just to treat our back pain. Um, you know, and, and our, it's not like our backs went bad. Our backs are fine. We've got the nicest beds that we've ever had in history. You know, we, uh, we, we drive in these ergonomic cars and we have these ergonomic seats at our office. We're not putting roof tiles on top of roofs or carrying our water or you know, carrying bales of hay on our shoulders anymore. You know, like we've got the easiest life ever. Our backs didn't go bad all of a sudden. Uh, emotionally, things are happening so fast, faster than they ever used to happen that we're not able to deal with the emotions. And that's why the, all this back pain is showing up now. So um, my experience has shown me that 90% of this pain is accompanied by an element of unprocessed emotions. And this statistic coincides with Kim Kologi, who came on the show um, in the very beginning. She said about 90% of the patients she sees as a physical therapist, 90% of them have an emotional component with whatever pain they come up to see her. Also, Dr. John Sarno wrote uh, multiple books about the link between pain and emotions. And uh, he's got a book called Healing Back Pain. He also has an Amazon Prime documentary, All the Rage Saved by Sarno. Extremely uh, awesome documentary if you want to get into this topic more than just this podcast. Uh, two other helpful books for me. One was about a guy who had every type of pain imaginable. It's called The Great Pain Deception. Uh, guy's name is Steve Ozanich. And uh, Steve just describes how uh, he believed all of this pain, like there was something really, really wrong with him in all these different ways. And then once he realized that, that his unprocessed emotions were manifesting all of these different diseases, um, just the knowledge alone that his unprocessed emotions were creating all this pain, he started to uh, get better. And that's the same thing that Dr. Sarno teaches. He calls it knowledge therapy. It's just knowing that there's not really a um, physical reason why you feel in pain. It's an emotional reason. Just knowing that your subconscious starts to process the emotions for you. Uh, to go deeper on how to process emotional uh, trapped emotions, Dr. Bradley Nelson wrote a book called The Emotion Code, uh, which was awesome. And he teaches a method about how you can use your Use a muscle test to identify where you have trapped emotions in your body. Now, this is wild. I, 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 most people won't believe it until they try it, but you can muscle test yourself uh, and ask yourself yes and no questions, and your subconscious will answer your own questions. I see Kim Kologi. She muscle tests me all the time. Kim will ask me yes and no questions. She'll say, uh, you have uh, unprocessed emotions in your liver. My body will say no. Then she'll say, you have unprocessed emotions in your gallbladder. My body will say yes. 
And then she'll ask what kind of emotion it is. And then my body will say, no, no, no. And then it'll say yes. And um, she's doing this. She's asking my arm. So when you're when your muscle goes strong, it's saying yes to a question. And when it's weak, it's no to a question. Well, Dr. Bradley Nelson teaches you how to muscle test yourself without having to go see a muscle testing specialist. And the, the method that I've found to be the easiest to do is called the sway test. You can do this now um, with yourself. You just go into any space where you're alone and you've got you know, you're not distracted by anything and close your eyes and stand with your feet shoulder width apart. And then you ask, you say a statement. Usually a good one is my name is, and then you say your real name. You'll notice on a true statement, your body will sway slightly forward towards your toes. Then you say a negative statement. My name is Cody and uh, your body will sway you backwards. I don't know why. You know, Dr. Bradley Nelson says that you sway forward to the truth because our, as a being, we're always moving towards what's true and moving away from what's false. So um, if you start to sway test yourself, you then could ask yourself the question, you could say the statement, I have trapped emotions in my body. And I mean, you're gonna sway forward. And then, then he has got a, a chart where you ask where the trapped emotion is and what trapped emotion it is. And then he has you release that trapped emotion using a magnet, like a refrigerator magnet. And it, he, uh, he uses also the acupuncture system, um, which is the energy system in our body and swiping the magnet from between our eyes and straight over the top of our head and then down to the back of our neck three times in a row once we've identified the trapped emotion is uh, is all that it takes to release that trapped emotion uh, with Dr. Bradley Nelson's method. I've done it. You think you think it's kind of crazy, but it I don't know why a magnet works. It just works. And so once you start to release these trapped emotions, your pain starts to go away. Now you still have to do the other things like the physical therapy or um, you know whatever the doctors recommend. But you're going to want to do what the traditional medicine is saying to do and release the trapped emotions simultaneously. And that's how you actually heal. Um, you know, once you start to see this link between the unprocessed anger and the unprocessed, it's not just anger. I mean, it's all emotions. Like I said, grief is stuck in my shoulder. You can't unsee it once you see it. Like now, as soon as I notice that I have a stiff neck, um, I'll be okay. I found this on the web for as soon as I notice that I have a stiff neck. <laughs> Thanks, Siri. So now, as soon as I, I notice that I have a stick neck, a stiff neck, um, I'll think, what just happened? Who just said what to me? And I'll un I'll see what the id got upset about. I was having a conversation with someone and um immediately I like I started to feel neck pain and like a headache coming on. And then like, I'm, I'm catching it as it's happening. And I'm saying, man, okay, what just happened? What, what were we just talking about that I got upset about? Because it's, it's subconscious. You don't know you're upset. If you knew you're upset, the pain wouldn't show up to alert you. Um, you would just like feel like upset. Well, uh, I was talking with somebody at a conference and she started talking about how the whole economy was going to crash and that there was all these indicators and she's looking at these experts and the world's going to go to hell in a handbasket. And, you know, she had all this doom and gloom stuff that she was telling me about, about our world and what was going to happen. And she had all these facts to back it up. And, um, Five minutes later, I've got this huge headache. And I'm like, man, what were we talking about? I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. So she was telling me that the economy was going to crash and everything was going to be super bad in the future. And for whatever reason, my id got really pissed off about that. You know, maybe it's because I run a company and I care about all the people here. And I didn't want to hear that, that like, we've got more bad times coming when it's already been kind of tough. Um, but, you know, once I saw that that's what I was upset about, I just released it. I said, okay. You know, I understand I'm upset about that. She doesn't know what's going to happen in the future. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I can take care of what I can do today. And just like talking it out with myself, the headache went away. 
the faster you can link your physical pain to the unconscious emotion, the easier it is to process that emotion fully and to free yourself of that pain. Um, if you're like me, you've dealt with these, this kind of pain like on and off forever. I can tell you this, uh, after I watched Dr. Sarno's All the Rage, uh, Netflix, or no, I'm sorry, not Netflix, but Amazon Prime uh, special, and I read his book, Healing Back Pain, all my back pain went away. I do not experience back pain any longer. And it was so bad. Like it, it was so bad. I couldn't play cornhole because I had to like bend down and pick up the bags. I couldn't bend down and pick up the bags and throw them. Like that's how bad it was. And now I don't experience it at all. So here's an exercise you can do uh, to release some trapped emotions in your body that doesn't involve doing a sway test. Typically what I do is I just ask myself questions. So right now, scan your body. Where are some areas of discomfort or pain? Where's, where is there discomfort in your body right now? Is, it, is your shoulder tight? Are you feeling some tension in your jawbone, in your neck? Does your back feel a little bit stiff? Are your hips stiff? You know, just close your eyes and feel into this area. Put all your attention wherever that tightness might be. And then, you know, answer these questions. Are, are you overworked or are you pushing yourself too hard? Are you worried about something? Are you holding on to a resentment towards someone? Is there someone that you need to forgive or something you need to let go of? Is there something in your life that you are resisting and not accepting right now? Do you wish you had more freedom? Do you need support that you feel like you're not getting? Do you feel overworked or overburdened by the demands in your life? Are you trying to carry too much? Do you need to pivot or change in some way? Do you need to take care of yourself more and give yourself more space to relax? Or do you feel like others are not respecting your boundaries and do you need more space? You know, as I just asked those questions, just take a moment. You know, if you need to pause this podcast, do. Grab a pen and paper and, and maybe rewind that part and go through those questions and, and whatever comes up for you that as you're focusing on that pain, you'll see like images pop in as, as you're thinking of that pain and these questions show up. Write down what's going on. Just writing down the emotional thing that could be behind the pain is the answer. Asking yourself these questions of being honest about the true source behind your tightness or pain is the solution to fully healing it. When you stop this charade that your pain is just because of physical elements and does not contain any emotional elements, your pain starts to subside. And then to keep pain from being stored in your body in the future, you know, go back to these questions. If, if you know, they're in the chapter uh, that I'm never going to publish because this, this chapter is not going in the book. I wrote a different chapter about, you know, conquering anger that we know about. But if you want this hidden chapter, uh, you know, go to the goodmoodshow.com and, uh, and, you know, subscribe to the newsletter. You can download this chapter instantly or, or go to our contact page. And the questions are right in uh, that download. And you can always just go back to those questions when you're feeling pain and ask yourself those, the, those questions and, and write down answers and you're going to notice that your pain starts to go away and will go completely away when you uh, when you take out the root cause, which is emotional roots. Sometimes it takes, you know, additional body work or seeing your chiropractor or seeing your physical therapist or, you know, maybe using um, emotional freedom technique, EFT tapping. That that's been really helpful for me. Or using a magnet with the emotion code. Um, but your pain is not a burden. Your pain is, is actually really, really helpful. If we didn't have physical pain, we wouldn't be alive. Physical pain is, is there to help us. You know, if, if we couldn't feel pain, we wouldn't know that we're burning our hand when we touch a hot stove. If we couldn't feel physical pain, we wouldn't know there was a rock in our shoe. And a buddy of mine actually couldn't feel uh, pain in his feet. And he got a, a rock stuck in his shoe at an amusement park. And it cost him years and years of surgeries to recover because of the damage that rock had done to his 
to his foot that he couldn't feel. So this pain is helpful. It's a signal. And in our case, it's a signal to examine our thoughts and our emotions that need addressing. Um, you know, not all anger is subconscious. Some anger is conscious. And the, the chapter that I'm actually going to publish is about conscious anger. And I'm just going to touch on it here as we wrap up the show. What do you do when you know you're mad? Well, when you know you're mad, expressing it towards the person you're mad at is not going to help you. It's only going to make things worse. If you cannot um, hold love in your heart as you have a conversation with someone, if you can't put yourself in their shoes, if you don't have compassion and empathy for them, you will not, you will not change their mind. You know, they will only get defensive as you approach them. So it's not going to do you any good to approach the person you're mad at when you're angry. The best thing to do when you're really, really angry with someone is to work on the anger first. And, um, you know, sometimes I just do that by, by, by getting space. You know, I'll say, hey, I need to sleep on this. I can get back to you tomorrow. And then sometimes I need like a week. Sometimes I need to pray for God to take away my anger, to help me see the innocence of this person when somebody I think has hurt me really, really bad. Um, you know, sometimes I need to, to take a lot of space and then look at how did I cause this? So, you know, don't approach the other person you're angry with until you can think of their face and feel loving towards them. Only then when you can feel loving towards them? Can you talk with them with compassion and understanding? And only then will they hear you and can you get somewhere? Um, the other thing you do with this anger, anger is just energy. And it's great, right? It's energy for change. But typically we direct the energy at someone else. Like, hey, I need you to change. You know, you're not doing it right. I need you to be different. You need to treat me better. Um, that doesn't work. But we can use that energy to change ourselves. So when you have the energy of anger, uh, direct it at yourself and say, what can I do different? How can I be different? What do I need to change? You know, maybe it is, hey, hey this person is not helpful for me in my life. They're very, they're very painful. This relationship really hurts. They don't respect me. They don't treat me with love and compassion. They're not kind. Um, the change that I could make, I don't need to go tell them all these things. That would just hurt their feelings. I can just choose to, to hang out with different people. And that's loving yourself. And also, you know, don't be unkind. You don't need to prove to them that they suck. You don't need to prove to them that they're unkind. You can, you can love them. You can send them love and, and work on your loving feelings towards them from afar. You can love them from afar. And, but the change that you can make to protect your light and protect your um, heart is to hang out with different people and to distance yourself from someone who's really hurtful to you. You know, sometimes we get really angry um, about a job. And, you know, the change we could make there is to say, well, you know, how could I do things differently at this job so I don't get so angry or delegate some things I don't like to do? Or, or maybe I should get a different job if I'm angry all the time at this job. Um, yeah, so that's what we do with anger that we know about. You're, you're going to want to, if it's towards someone else, separate yourself from them and don't speak to them in anger and, and don't actually speak to them until you don't need to prove anything to them. You don't need to prove that they're wrong and that you're right. And don't go like, don't go recruit your mom and your spouse and all your best friends about how awful they are. That doesn't work either. They're all going to agree with you. Um, just work on yourself. Say, okay, I put myself in this situation with this person. I'm really angry at them. Typically, when I'm angry at someone about something, uh, it's because I also do that thing and I don't like it. So um, if I was to make a change, I don't need to change them, but what could I change about myself? Because the advice I want to give them is really just really good advice for me. So what it what can I learn from this? I'm angry about them because they're being selfish. Well, obviously, I don't like it when I'm selfish. So what can I change about me so that I'm not selfish? And then there, that's what you do with anger you know about. Well, I hope this episode has been really helpful for you. Uh, thank you for listening. And I wish you guys all the best week. We'll see you next week.